how important is is nuclear energy to our prospects for to, to our prospects of reducing carbon emissions and why does it not seem to be a bigger part of the conversation? Why are we dragging our feet on it if it's important? So the the answer to the first question is, you know, I always like to just uh, look at when you're when you're comparing different energy technologies, I think it's important to look at entire countries because then you see you're not cherry picking. You can see a comparison between two countries over time. So I always point to France and Germany. France uh, generates electricity that produces one tenth of the carbon emissions as Germany and the reason and at one half of uh, the price. So it uh, produces 10 percent of the carbon emissions as Germany for about uh, 50 percent the cost. And it does so because France is 75 percent nuclear and Germany is moving away from nuclear and heavily doing renewables. So when you see the countries that have been able to basically eliminate air pollution uh, because nuclear power plants don't produce uh, air pollution or water pollution, um, they've done so with nuclear. And that goes even in the United States. If you look at places like Illinois, which are very heavy nuclear, they also have some of the cleanest electricity and also the cheapest. The problem with renewables is that they require, you know, 300 times more land than solar and wind, which takes a lot of money. Uh, they are less efficient in terms of labor and then they're weather dependent. And so you can't depend on them, meaning that if you have a heat wave or you have a cold snap or something happens, as we saw in California and Texas, you always have to have some base load power plant ready to go. And so what Germany has done is just kept its coal plants around. We just burn gas. But when you over depend on those weather dependent renewables like we did in California and Texas, you have blackouts and people die. So the, the, the why are people so afraid of it? If nuclear is so good, why are people afraid of it? You know, the short answer to it is that people associate nuclear power plants with nuclear weapons. And they, uh, to use a psychological concept, they displace their anxiety from the power plants onto uh, nuclear weapons. I did this. Um, I grew up in the 80s. And that was a time when people were much more worried about nuclear war than they are today. And I used to think nuclear power plants, if they had a meltdown, it was the same thing as them exploding. I know that I might have been in the minority in terms of thinking that, but there's still a lot of people that just have a basic fear of nuclear power plants because they they think it's the same as a weapon or they think it somehow leads to nuclear weapons. There's a related part of that, and I can never tell quite which is more important or if one of them is more important than the other. But it's just this issue that, you know, if you have nuclear power plants and you're France, you don't need to change how people live their lives. People can keep producing, eat, consuming a lot of energy. They can consume a lot of electricity. When you have electric cars or fuel cell cars that are powered by nuclear power plants, they don't produce carbon emissions. So there's no need. There's no basis for moralizing. Mm. So if you're someone that really wants to that gains a lot of pleasure from telling other people how to live their lives, telling them not to eat meat, telling them they have to have solar on their roofs, telling them that they have to use a lot less energy. Nuclear is a bummer because it means that there's no basis for your demands of radical societal transformation. You can just have a technical fix and nuclear is the ultimate technical fix. And so you see this theme a lot. Um, and, and the resistance here particularly came from a group of people that were followers of the British economist uh, Thomas Malthus, who believed uh, axiomatically that humans were going to run out of resources. Well, the followers of Malthus are really threatened by nuclear because nuclear means you'll never run out of energy because nuclear is fundamentally infinite. And if you have infinite and reliable clean energy, then you can have infinite fertilizer and infinite fresh water thanks to desalination and, and, to, and conventional uh, methods of producing fertilizer. So you'll never run out of food. I mean, there's, there's an argument to be made that there's really never a scarcity issue with fossil fuels either because there's so much fossil fuels in the world. And now there's even more than ever because we know how to get natural gas at a low cost out of the oceans and out of uh, shale. But nuclear was a real threat to people who had an interest, whether it was psychological or spiritual or economic, in creating scarcity and in creating the notion that scarcity, that there was some uh, scarcity that existed for sort of inherently physical reasons. Mm. I do think 
in many cases, technical fixes are less popular than moral fixes, than, than fixes that allow for a crusade. Because technical fixes appeal to the wonk in you. And that just that just tends to be a less popular kind of mode of talking about issues than than what appeals to the warrior and crusader in you. It seems just more people are wired for the crusade and for battle than for any solution that is wonky and technical and maybe nerdy, but in many cases better. And the, the other... The other idea that uh, in the same vein is the possibility of carbon capture technology. Can you describe what that is and, um, you know, tell us to what extent it's actually possibly a fix or, or a solution to these issues? Is it just science fiction or does it seem possible? Oh, no, it's totally possible. In fact, there's really no disagreement that we can do it. It's the problem. There's no important science or really that significant of engineering required to capture and bury the carbon emissions. It's just expensive because you're adding a huge additional piece of machinery onto the onto coal or natural gas plants. And you're also having to store that carbon underground safely for a long period of time, which I think you can do. But again, it's very expensive and then there's also an energy penalty, meaning you have to use a significant amount of that energy just to pull the carbon off and put it underground. So it's something that a lot of Democrats and Republicans can find agreement on. I personally just don't buy it. I, I kind of think, um, you know, one thing people don't realize, we the United States has reduced its carbon emissions more than any other country in the world ever over the last 20 years. And it was almost entirely due from moving from coal to natural gas. We didn't do, there was all these ideas 10 years ago, 12 years ago um, to that we would sort of do, keep our coal plants going, but use carbon capture and storage. We just shut down the coal plants and did natural gas. And that was just more economical. The gas was so much cheaper. And and honestly, when people are like, well, we can have carbon capture and storage with natural gas, it's half as efficient because there's half as much carbon emissions from gas as coal. And so then you have to raise the question, of, well, why aren't you just building a nuclear plant? Like, what is it like? Why you're going to go to all this cost of all this heavy machinery? Like, why would you not just build nuclear? So I tend to be skeptical both as a analyst who tries to forecast the future to some extent, recognizing how bad we are at that. But also as some as an advocate and and somebody that is asked to advise policymakers. And none of the policymakers like to hear this because everybody wants to support the R and D for carbon capture and storage, or whatever. But I'm just I'm just a carbon capture and storage uh, skeptic, not because I think there's anything like immoral about it or science fiction about it. I just don't think it makes that much sense economically. Why wouldn't you just use natural gas and nuclear? Yeah. And do you do you doubt the possibility of discovering some method of carbon capture that's way cheaper? Well, we have. I mean, there is this thing called Net Power, which is a company that um, has been able to use uh, the carbon that they capture from natural gas production for industrial purposes, um, including enhanced oil um, recovery, which is a way of shooting the carbon dioxide into um into oil, uh, uh, you know, resources and, and pull the oil out, but it's still not particularly scalable. And again, if you're, if you're, you know, you can just think about it as the picture is you can have a system with a natural gas plant that burns the natural gas, or you can have a system that burns the natural gas and also captures the carbon emissions. The, the second system is always going to be more expensive just mm -hmm. because there's no, there's not really that big of a market for carbon emissions. You know, if there were, there would be a lot more companies capturing them and selling them. And even its use for enhanced oil recovery is pretty limited. So, I mean, I never say never. And in general, I'm happy to spend a lot of money on R&D, you know, like in part because I know enough about the history of innovation that people try to do things that don't work, but then something else good will come out of it. And so you kind of go, all right, there should be there should be. R&D funding for it, but it wouldn't be something I would 
um, that we that I would expect would be used at at significant levels in the future.